Hello everyone, um, I am uh, Professor Erki Hohtamo from UCLA Departments of Design, Media, Arts and Film, Television, Digital Media. People call me a media archaeologist and they often send me emails and questions about all kinds of weird old gadgets that they believe that I, I know. So I decided that maybe instead of writing all those emails, I will uh, create a series of short videos for the YouTube and talk to you and, and show you some of these devices uh, I'm interested in and which I also use in my research and my teaching and sometimes in my, my shows as well. And I would like to begin by um, a very central topic, which is the idea about projecting images. Uh, this um, has been happening, let's say, since the second half of the 17th century, when something called the magic lantern was invented. This magic lantern that I'm holding here comes from England about 1840, but in its uh, basic features, it is very much like those early lanterns that had been used for several hundreds of years. Uh, magic lantern um, was partly a, a result of the um, uh, art of um, lens grinding, which was perfected in, in Holland. So you needed lenses that magnify uh, images. And so that's basically what magic lanterns would, would do. This kind of very basic old magic lantern like this one, this was made by, in, in London by an optician named Gagarty, um, has a simple lens tube that, uh, that as you see, comes, uh, comes out. And inside, is, it has an uh, oil lamp. And it has a handle also because the, the tin gets uh, very, very hot. And you would actually then need to have, of course, a box of slides. This lantern that I found many years ago came with a box of original slides. And the lantern slides here would have been hand painted. So you take one and put it upside down. You light the oil lamp and you slide the uh, slide in and then you start telling the stories. And this is the way how touring lanternists traveled the world and then little by little shows were started in, in uh, salons of the, of the rich and uh, then uh, in all kinds of show places. And, and so something called the magic lantern culture was, was born. Now, these kind of lanterns were often used for, uh, uh, for also touring professional show people. But as I will show you in what follows, in the 19th century, especially, the magic lantern became a much more sophisticated piece of technology. Um, one step uh, would be magic lanterns like, like this one. This one here was a um, uh, so-called uh, improved phantasmagoria lantern. Uh, why it was called that way, I will tell you in a moment. This particular one was made by, uh, by um, John Benjamin Dancer, who was a a Manchester-based uh, important inventor and uh, optical uh, instrument maker. And um, this kind of lantern uh, also used an oil lamp, but this oil lamp was a little bit more sophisticated one. This is the so-called solar lamp or argon lamp, so which has a, a oil reservoir at the back. It has a, has a reflector. And, and then it has a has a this burner unit. So with this kind of lantern light source, you could get actually much more sort of like sophisticated and longer throw light, which is not not good for very large uh, auditoriums, but but better than those early lanterns that these touring show people had been carrying for for many years. I mentioned um, improved phantasmagoria, uh, and of course that has to be an improvement from phantasmagoria. Uh, phantasmagoria was a very important uh, stage in the history of moving images. Um, it um, became popular in the uh, end of the 18th century during the time of the French Revolution and was shown for many decades uh, after that. 
This magic lantern here is a, a so-called phantascope, a phantasmagoria lantern uh, from uh, probably uh, about 1820s. It has some very special features that I will explain to you now. First of all, you see it has a very long uh, uh, optical tube and a focusing lens that goes back and forth. That was needed because this kind of lantern was often put on a moving pedestal, often with wheels. Uh, the purpose was to project monsters or ghosts or other strange things from behind the screen. So you would never see this magic lamp. It would have a, a shutter to make those ghosts appear. Uh, and, uh, and, and disappear. And also the Magic Lantern slides were very special ones because they were painted on, on um, black backgrounds. Uh, this means of course that you want these figures and faces and horrifying things to sort of like as if appear from nowhere. So the lamp itself was still quite uh, normal common uh, argon lamp in that kind of uh, Magic Lanterns. So, Phantasmagoria was popular, but at the same time people were getting used to it. So, instead of projecting those monsters, you know, like uh, forever, people started replacing this with landscapes and, and uh, other topics, and including interesting effects, for example, from uh, transformations from uh, day to night. And that was, in a way, the next step in the evolution of the uh, Magic Lantern. Dissolving Views was the next big innovation in the history of the Magic Lantern after Phantasmagoria. Um, it started uh, becoming more common from the 1830s on and was very often shown during the uh, 19th century. Magic uh, Lanterns uh, that were used were uh, a pair of identical lanterns and in front of those lanterns you would have a uh, a shutter plate that would be moved by a crank from behind. Uh, oil lamps would be burning inside both lanterns. You would be taking uh, lantern slides that were more or less identical, putting them into the uh, magic lanterns. And then when the presentation started, you would actually start moving the shutter plate up and down, so you would be blocking one lens tube and opening another. And this way you could, for example, uh, cause a river boat on the Mississippi River to catch fire. But you could also create other kinds of effects. For example, make angels appear in the sky. So that you could achieve that, you would actually have to then open these shutter plates in front of the the lanterns and this means of course that you would be projecting at the same time on the same spot on the screen uh, the way you want it. The culmination of the magic lantern culture came in the final uh, quarter of the 19th century and in the beginning of the 20th so it uh, overlapped uh, in the uh, around 1900 with the coming of the film-based moving image technology that will be studying one of these other uh, parts of the series. The magic lanterns which were made at that late stage were sophisticated uh, machines uh, meant for uh, professional uh, lanternists who had the skills that, that were needed. Um, biunial and triunial lanterns uh, refer to lanterns with uh, two optical tubes or even three ones and this made it possible to sort of like produce all kinds of interesting effects. The light sources at that point uh, were normally um, uh, gas light, so so-called oxyhydrogen or, uh, or limelight. Uh, that's where the famous word comes from. So in um, those lanterns you would have a lamp like this with uh, uh, these uh, tubes for oxygen and hydrogen and, and then uh, you would have a piece of uh, limestone 
and the flame uh, from here would hit the limestone and produce a very bright white light. So this was the strongest human-made light before electric carbon arc uh, developed and became more common. So again you would have two of these inside those uh, magic lanterns and you would dissolve by lowering or raising the gas light. So you don't need any kind of mechanical dissolver. This uh, magnificent pioneer lantern from um, uh, 1890s sold by Wallace Fraser in Edinburgh has a, a tinting wheel in front of one of the tubes. And that means that um, if you fo project photographic lantern slide, you can uh, sort of like uh, accent, produce visual accents, let's say if it's a nighttime scene or daytime scene and so on. You also have other additional effects, like in this particular ones, you have a this kind of a, a vertical curtain that is uh, crank operated, so you can actually make these slides disappear and appearing, why sort of like wipe-like effects and, and so on. Next to me, uh, there is a magic lantern that shows the uh, complicated light system that I mentioned. Uh, when you look at all this tubing and um, and so you uh, keep in mind also that the op operator had to tell the or follow at least the story and uh, show the slides in the right order and not upside down, you imagine that then it, it needed a lot of concentration. These lanterns were heavy to travel with and they often came huge with huge amounts of accessories. You would have series of, of lenses with different focal lengths depending on the, on the auditorium uh, where you were performing. You would have all kinds of regulators and devices like this for the gas lights. So it was a profession. It was not for children. But children had their own magic lanterns too. Uh, their production seems to have started in the late 18th century already in Germany where tinsmiths and toy manufacturers started producing cute little devices that could be given as a Christmas gift for example. This is a, a typical example of such magic lanterns from the later 19th century made in uh, Nuremberg. These lanterns um, had um, kind of attractive uh, looks, but could do relatively little, only produce very small uh, images. So this particular lantern, as you can see, could take round images, or it could also take the typical uh, horizontal ones. Uh, these are the kind of lanterns that most people collecting magic, magic lanterns um, concentrate on, but for me these are mostly a sort of like kind of sideline, so the magic lantern really was a professional device. But they have certain interest in, uh, because they show how the media culture in the 19th century little by little was infiltrating the home and in a way preparing for devices like the radio and television and the personal computers in the 20th century. So the high era of the Magic Lantern came to an end in the late 19th century and early 20th century, partly because of the uh, introduction and success of uh, celluloid-based moving images. But Magic Lanterns were made for many decades after that and used in education and, and for other purposes. In the uh, last times, the magic lantern became uh, made uh, industrially through the principles of mass production. Especially in the United States, great lanterns were made and constructed out of interchangeable parts. Great example would be the lanterns by James P. Colt, like the one that I'm, I'm showing here. This is a lantern that you can completely dismantle and uh, sort of like change every part and, and change the light sources and so on. And you have a tiny uh, compact package which is as powerful as those huge uh, British mahogany brass magic lanterns 
that were clumsy and heavy to carry. The transition from uh, magic lantern culture to uh, film-based moving images was gradual and smooth rather than uh, abrupt. Uh, so, uh, Magic Lantern showmen were often uh, among the first to get the um, a moving picture projector, which they added to their Magic Lantern as a kind of a, like a special attraction. We can see this situation very concretely if we look at the uh, structure of early moving picture machines like this one, which is Thomas Edison's uh, uh, universal project in kinetoscope uh, came to the market uh, 1903. This is an actually an early one. So uh, it has the uh, projector at the front. Uh, it has a lamp house which is essentially a magic lantern. And the projector is hand cranked. So, but there's something interesting. So when you look at this system, so you see that there's the lens for projecting those moving images, but, but next to it we have another lens. And this lens is actually moved in place to show magic lantern slides. So the early movie shows were actually often this kind of hybrid form, so uh, moving between slides and films. Films were short and they were not often enough of those. And this kind of an idea did not disappear quickly at all. So in the even 1920s in the movie palaces, uh, there were movies, but there were also coming attraction slides and something which uh, were known as uh, song slides, kind of sing-along, so proto-karaoke type of uh, sort of like collective uh, rituals. So this is basically what I uh, had to say about Magic Lanterns. Uh, uh, in the next part, and I hope that you will keep on watching these uh, programs, I want to talk about something which I call Peep Media. Thank you and bye.